Good morning and welcome to the beautiful Piazza Navona. Here you can see, just to give yourself a little bit of orientation of where we're at today for our tour of architecture, is just at the end of the piazza, if you take the road going straight across the river, you hit the Caso, San, Caso de Angelo, and just across from there is the Vatican. So we're very close to the Vatican, and a couple blocks away from us, behind us, is our dear friend the Pantheon. So here we are in the heart of Rome, in front of the beautiful Piazza Navona, and if you see this beautiful church, San Agone in St. Agnes in Agony. We're gonna take a step, come a little closer to look at the edifice. So if you'll come with me across the piazza. So here we are in front of this grand Baroque church. It was commissioned by the Pope and he, it kind of went through a couple hands. And this is important because it changed design. It started as a flat edifice and then it was assigned to our, our dear friend Borromini who we're gonna be talking about today. Borromini, he laid out the plans, the four plans, modified them from the previous artist that had them. And then he took this edifice and added his Baroque flavor to it. If you notice, first of all, that it's concave, the front of it is concave so they could make room in the piazza to have the steps because they didn't want it taking over the whole piazza. So the steps coming down in this concave shape. And if you notice the front, these two towers on either side, they have this inward and outward curvature this changing of, of shape, almost as though the building's a little bit wavy, like it's moving just a bit. This is key to Baroque architecture. So Borromini, he constructed just this first, all the way up until the railing, where you see that railing. The top two parts of the towers were designed by someone else because the Pope died and the next Pope wasn't too interested in the project and Borromini, well, he got disappointed. And so he gave up, he resigned. So. This is just a taste of what Borromini can do with architecture. And I wanna head over to our next, to another church, the Chiesa di San Carolina. This is a masterpiece of Baroque architecture because this church is practically alive in, in its shape and in its movement. This is just the facade of the church. And look at how it undulates and moves. It's as though the whole thing is, changing shape as you're looking at it. There's statues, every, there's statues up in the different cornices. Even the top of the building is this wavy effect with a huge medallion that would have had the logo of the Trinitarians who commissioned him to make this wonder of Baroque art. One thing I want you to notice here is just how small, this is the front of the church. The church fits just into the same space going back behind us because the Trinitarians, they wanted a chapel for their, for their abbey here, and they had very limited space. So Borromini had to pack as much as he could into this small confined space defined by the roads around it and the buildings. So if we, if we come on inside, this is the high altar behind us. And these are the walls with the colonnades. It's, as I said, it's a very small chapel. We're standing here in the middle, looking at the high altar. So not a very large church. But the first thing I want you to notice is that there's no flat walls. The whole church is, again, this moving, this undulation, this coming alive, this almost sumptuous architecture that's moving constantly. And even above the archway is above the high altar and the side altars are just filled with details and movement and geometry that's not set and structured but changing. And if you look above you, just take a moment to look upwards at the ceiling. This is the beautiful dome of San Carlino. This shape, first of all, is an extreme work of geometry because the dome isn't even circular, it's an oblong. And everything in it is moving. Everything is moving. And the keystone, the key, or the cherry on top of the cake, if you want to say, of this church is right there in the center as you're looking up. Because it looks like there's light coming out of the Holy Spirit who's descending into the church. This break into heaven almost, that's very simple, but masterfully achieved is because Borromini designed it so that you can't see the windows that are there. 
But all that light is all natural. And it's coming in from these windows that are below that Holy Spirit. And they shine in and the Holy Spirit's light just floods into the chapel. And it gives you a sense that the Holy Spirit is descending upon you in the liturgy of the Mass. I recommend that you take a couple moments in this chapel just to absorb the living presence of the Lord here because everything is moving, is full of beauty and just, and just lifts your soul up to God in that way. And if you want on your way out, you'll notice that they have a, a map scheme of the church. And I recommend you take a look at this because this is just how tightly packed Bormini was able to masterfully put so much beauty and baroqueness <laughs> into this one beautiful church.